In this example, we've got a company that is currently paying a $3 dividend. That dividend is expected to grow by 25% next year. Then it's expected to decline by 10% the year after, and then settle into its long-term growth rate of 3% per year indefinitely. If the required return is 10%, let's figure out the appropriate price for this company. So in this example, the, or the dividend today is $3. So on our timeline, the dividend at period one is going to be $3, or $3 grown at 25%. This is $3.75. Okay. After that, the dividend is supposed to decline by 10%. So we have to reduce this $3.75 by 10%. We do that by multiplying it by 0.9. When you do that, the dividend is going to reduce down to $3.38. After that, the dividend is going to settle down into its long-term growth rate growing at 3%. So the dividend is going to grow 3.38 times 1.03, and it's going to continue growing at 3% indefinitely. Okay. Let me fix that. There we go. All right, so now we have a timeline, and we know that the discount rate, the appropriate rate to discount these cash flows, our K, is 10%. So the first thing we need to do is to value this um, perpetuity, this growing perpetuity, this infinite stream of dividends. So we, we pretend that we're standing, standing one period before that infinite stream of cash flow starts. So on our timeline, we would be pretending to stand at period two. So the price we would expect to be able to sell the stock for at period two is the present value of this infinite stream of cash flows. So using that perpetuity formula, we have P2, and this is equal to the dividend, 1 plus G, the G in this case is 3%, over K minus G. So the discount rate here is 10%, and the growth rate, once again, is 3%. When you plug that in, we have a terminal value, or what we expect to be able to sell the company for, or that share of stock for, at period two is $49.73. So now we can redraw our timeline and actually come up with a price of the, the stock. So we will still receive the dividend of $3.75 in year one. We'll still receive the dividend of $3.75 and 38 cents in period two, but we also have that terminal value of $49.73. Remember that the perpetuity formula will find the present value as of wherever we're pretending to stand, and we're pretending to stand one period before the start of that perpetuity. So after period two, three, and four, there's no cash flows after this point because we've already accounted for them in the terminal value. So now the entire exercise is to discount the, these three cash flows back to today. So the price today is going to be the 3.75 that first dividend divided by one plus the appropriate discount rate, which in this example is 10%, technically raised to the first, plus the second dividend, and we have to discount that back 
two periods. So one plus the discount rate squared. And then we have to discount back the terminal value, which is $49 and 73 cents. And we discount that once again at the 10%. But remember that we're only discounting this back two periods because that's where we were pretending to stand um, on our original timeline when we took the present value of the perpetuity. So when you plug that all in, you get a value of this share of stock of $47.30.